Article 2 of the National Society of the Colonial Danes states that the Society's objectives will be to collect and preserve manuscripts, traditions, relics, and mementos of bygone days, to collect and preserve and restore buildings connected with the early history of our country, to educate our fellow citizens and ourselves in our country's history, and to stimulate a spirit of true patriotism, a love of country, and to impress upon the young the sacred obligation of honoring the memory of those heroic ancestors. It is our joy today to speak with Elizabeth Keenan Buchanan. Elizabeth is with her niece, a native of Selma, Julia Keenan Wilcox. Julia is a member of the Birmingham Center, but we too claim Julia. Her aunt was instrumental in impressing upon her the sacred obligation of honoring the memory of their ancestors. Hello, Aunt Wood. Oh, um, well, well, my family, well, as many others did, came down to here, uh, to Alabama, from North Carolina, and um, uh, he, uh, they, they were up there when the Revolutionary War took place, and uh, Cornwallis had requisitioned their house up there. And when he left, he left to join, to join the army in Virginia, uh, when, where he was going to um, admit defeat. And um, so he took out this little table here, and uh, on the way, it fell out of the wagon, and my uh, ancestor found it and put it uh, at his back in his house. And you see, it has a has a split through the middle. We haven't gotten it fixed because we think this is an interesting story. Whether or not it's true, that's. <laughs> and, and didn't your father didn't your father tell you that, and his father, father told him yeah, that? Yeah, and so it was one of those things that, that we just told about. Uh, I, I, there are many stories that all of us can can describe of their own fathers telling them stories that should they, are uh, they sort of, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, tell, tell us how um, our family ended up in Dallas County and to Selma. Well, I think this is about the time of the, the creek, the creeks, Andrew Jackson had insisted that the creeks leave, and I saw article in the paper here a few days ago that said it was the Creeks had ceded their land to the United States government and it was one of the largest um, uh, uh, tracts of land that had ever been changed from one owner to the other and uh, so that at that time then people started rushing in here Oh, there were a lot of free land, and um, they and I guess my that's about the time that my family came in here, and many others too, and uh, we came down here. And of course, they didn't have any. Uh, they came in wagons, and and they the first thing they tried to do was to get something built to keep the rain off, and uh, they, they, you know they didn't really have any. They didn't have uh, architects or really any uh, uh, what am I artisans. Doing? Yeah, to build this, and they used these pattern books such as this, and this one is almost exactly uh, this uh, uh, this picture here, uh, together with the plan, is almost exactly the plan of our house, which there's a picture of our house right up there, and um, uh, so. Okay, I, well also uh, tell us about the mill, about Keenan's mill. Uh, well, at some point, uh, <clears throat> you know, water power, it was during the Industrial Revolution, and water power uh, had been known for a long time, and they built, they, these people had to have something to eat. And the, you, human beings cannot just eat corn without, without grinding it a little bit, and uh, so this was something that uh, if people were were uh, growing corn, and they would bring the corn in in 
cotton sacks to the mill and they, the miller would be there and he would grind the, the corn into meal and grits. Uh, and uh, they would measure the corn and there would always be a little left and that was so there was no, there was no exchange of money. It was, he would keep the, what was known as the, I can't remember what it's known as, but it was, that was the... <laughs> Residue. <laughs> yeah, they kept that part that was left over uh, for themselves, and that was their payment. Uh, but uh, what member of your family do we think built the mill? It may have been my uncle, my uh, uncle father's uncle? brother. And uh, so it was still in operation for for a long, long time until my mother it was taken over by my mother, and then she got tired of doing it and uh, closed it up. And there weren't, as a matter of fact, people now don't have they while they grow corn, they don't um, they don't take it anywhere to. Grind it. They just buy, buy at the grocery store. Buy grits and meal in the grocery store. I, I remember Wilson and Jerry. They were the millers. Yeah, they yeah, helped run right. the mill. That's right. And <laughs> and I think it's I think it's so generous of you to have, have restored the mill and give it to the Selma Dallas County Historical Society. Well, I was glad to do it because I hated I hated thought just just to be taken over by uh, rack and run. And, uh, and people who throw garbage on all the roads. So uh, I thought that would be what would happen to it if I didn't give it to some. So every now and then we open we open the mill and the grain and the uh, and the area around that. And they ha we have a day called Kenan's Mill Day, and we we manage to get enough water behind the dam. To, uh, so it will turn the huge rocks inside and turn those rocks and grind that corn into meal. You, was, you restored it. It is operational. Uh, yeah. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. Currently. They have to somebody who knows how to do it. Yes. <clears throat> well, we'll also tell, tell us what all you've done um, for the Colonial Dames. Uh, weren't you a registrar for four uh, years? Oh, uh, yes. I think I was. It was a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, a hard, it was a real hard job. <laughs> uh, that's when. Uh, that's the hardest job I've ever had. <laughs> Selma was the center I, at, yes, for four years. That's right. And um, you did a very good job, I hear. Oh, with well, that. thank you. Uh, uh, well, anyway, we kept it going that way, and we had, <clears throat> there were a lot of papers to be. And um, so we had to look over the papers and... This was before computers, too. That's right. Yes. And yes. I remember uh, um, other centers had to um, okay some of the, some of the people that were, were getting in the uh, Colonial Dames. And uh, there was one um, uh, in South Carolina they didn't want to let her in. And I said her name was... Uh, something that it started, what was it? It, it? it was, she was born, her grandmother was born on the day that the uh, uh, Civil War started because when they uh, bombarded uh, Fort Sumter? Huh? Fort Sumter? Yeah. And so they, I wrote her, I wrote her and said, listen, this woman, I know that she's should be in the colonial dames because her grandmother was born on the day <laughs> <laughs> from Charleston. <laughs> uh, well, what is the name of our colonial colonial ancestor from North Carolina? Uh, Gerald James Keener. Okay. Uh, instead of asking you how you would like to be remembered, I would like to tell you how you will be remembered. And that is a, a good mother, aunt, friend, historian, and always glad to see us and sorry to see us go. That's right. <laughs> Lucky to have you. <laughs> the Selma Dames have also duly impressed upon the younger generations 
so much so that there are those who are continuing this mission now in Selma, and there are other Selma natives who have taken this loyalty to centers across Alabama and even other states as active members there. Our passion is so great that our husbands, fathers, and sons also join us as we work to preserve our history. It is our desire today to share our pride in our families and in our past through the recollection of a, of a few who will highlight their ancestors' histories and Selma's contributions to the National Society of the Colonial Dames. It is with great pleasure that Julia and Libba are being joined by their lifelong friends, Judge Miller Childers and his daughter, Center Chair Caroline Childers Major. Caroline is an active member of the Colonial Dames in Selma. Her family also has a legacy of patriotism and love of country. Well, I'm so lucky that my father, um, passion is genealogy. Some daddies play golf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some daddies um, hunt, but my daddy is a genealogist. So I didn't have to work very hard. Daddy, would you share a little bit about my colonial ancestors that I joined? Lieutenant Colonel Francis Hardiman was born in Charles City County, Virginia around 1688 and was a resident of that county and he died in that county before the August 11th, 1741. In his service was, he was a member of the House of Burgesses for Charles City County, 23rd of April, 1718. Gentleman Justice of Charles City County, June 1737 and Lieutenant Colonel of the Militia for Charles City County. And uh, Caroline's mother's ancestor. Uh, and of course she was a member of the Colonial Dames and also president of the Selma Center. And then her mother was Ms. Robert T. Jones and she was also president of the Selma Center. So when I was asked to be the president of the Selma Center to work my way up to that, I was spoken to from the grave that I had to say yes. <laughs> 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 to follow in their footsteps and assume that responsibility. Um, it, was a, it was a rite of passage. It was something that I knew I would always do. And my daughter is also a colonial day. Um, so, and she actually has her invitation framed and on her wall with her graduation invitation. So, I hope that someday she has to work a little less and can be more involved. The most important thing that the Colonial Dames has offered me is the chance for preservation and to realize how important it is because we live in a throwaway society and what will be the things that are lasting that we can offer those who come after us? And this is one way that we can do what needs to be done and show generations in the future what, where they've been so they can know what's, what's, ahead, what's behind them so they can prepare for a better way in the future. Your ancestors through Halley was was a uh, Dr. Robert Hall, and uh, uh, he, he's he. This is a particularly it's a DAR paper because he but he was also would be a colonial ancestor, but uh, nobody's used him yet. But the interesting thing about it is is. Uh, 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 Halle's great aunt, Peepy, they called her, had, had kept uh, the wedding jacket of, of Dr. Robert Hall, who's, who's uh, uh, was born in 1755 and died in 1797 in Halifax County, North Carolina, but she gave that to the museum. But the, the, his wife had an unusual name, Wills, W-I-L-L-S, Nobs, N-O-B-B-S, and she was French, but we don't really know anything about her ancestry because, you know, this is Grace, this is Grace, Grace's <laughs> husband, 
and uh, Carolina uh, second cousins and to share this same ancestry. But uh, some other things I still had from people and then, and, and, and that included, we thought it was the wedding dress of Wills Knobs Hall, but when they, we sent it down there and they sent it off and had it authenticated by people knowing materials and they said no, this was, would have been the day after the wedding dress. <laughs> and they knew all this, but they all just play down, down in Mobile at the shop. In the Condé Shaw <laughs> house. Well, you can see that Daddy's looking through the pa how papers were done. How many years ago? Many long years ago? Well, that, that's Mary Drew's DAL papers on Dr. Robert. But they're a little bit more applicant friendly now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when Daddy was doing my daughter's, you had to write the birth and death dates of of my mother and my grandmother. And so we went to the cemetery and took a picture of the tombstones. And that was not a good enough proof that they were so deceased. <laughs> I do not know what they thought we did to fabricate a tombstone in the cemetery. But um, we had to order their death certificates from the Alabama uh, State Department of Vital Statistics to prove that they were uh, actually de deceased. If my grandmother was still alive, she would be one of the oldest living people around. <laughs> so, so I think that just shows um, how the process has become more involved and intricate. But um, that they like to ask is, how would you like to be remembered? And I, I would like. I, before I became a, a retired and a volunteer, I was a teacher for 37 years, but um, I'd like to just be remembered as someone who lived honestly and fearlessly and that encouraged other people. And I feel like that the Colonial Dame certainly gives you an opportunity to use that as a vein to many other um, avenues in wherever you are, in any phase of life, just modeling. The Selma Center of the Colonial Dames has always embraced these objectives. We have had the privilege since our beginning to maintain our commitment to our ancestors and their legacy of ability, valor, and achievements. The ladies in our center have worked diligently to collect, preserve, and restore many historic sites, and many are in Selma. Some of the landmarks include Sturdivant Hall, Kenan's Mill, and markers such as the boulder to commemorate a 1714 meeting between Bienville, the governor of the province, and the Alabama Indians, which occurred on a high bluff overlooking the Alabama River in Selma. These efforts demonstrate a spirit of true patriotism and a love of country. It is with great pride that at our table of friends we join mother and daughter, past president, Grace Gould Hobbs and her mother Louise McFadden Gould. These Selma ladies are two excellent examples to highlight our commitment. Well, we've been in the Colonial Dames a long time. <laughs> well, what, what, we, what we might do is tell them your birth date and then they will know that it's been a long time. <laughs> oh, well, my birthday is November 14th and that's not far away. And I was born in 1918, so I'm getting older every year. But still interested in the Colonial Dames, and it was because of my mother that I became a Dame, and I think it was because of my great aunts that she became a Dame. Yes, she loved it. Uh, Birdie, they called her, but Long, Miss J.C. Long. And she loved all, Mr. Bowles loved it too, and both of them wanted me to be one, so I've enjoyed being a Colonial Dame. I haven't done much for them, but I've enjoyed being one. Well, I think you, you were certainly active at the same time as, I think the same time Libba was the registrar, you were the corresponding secretary? I was. That's right, when the center was, um, when and the headquarters were in Selma. Hallie, uh, 
led me along and told me I had to do all these things and I was very <laughs> dutiful <laughs> and did them. She was a great, uh, great one to get you to do things and she did a good job. She loved Colonial Dame, so we had a good time during her reign. <laughs> and Hallie, of course, is was Miller's yes. wife and Caroline's I'm mother. Her. But may I tell them a funny story about what Hallie said to you? Yeah, I don't know. Why. She said the, the so many things. <laughs> <laughs> if it's percent of what it's every is it every fifteen years or every twenty years that the headquarters change? And so when it was in Selma. <laughs> the time before last, Hallie said to Mother, when they were worried about having to do, it's, it's all of the work that has to be done when you're the center, Hallie said to Mother, well, you won't have to be here for the next one. You'll be an old live oak. <laughs> <laughs> that is our cemetery. And <laughs> so when, when it rolled around again, which was in 2011, Two years ago, wasn't it? Well, we, had, we had it for four years. and So anyway, Mother was very concerned, and I, I didn't understand she was acting um, <laughs> uncommonly, um, I, I don't even know what to say, just different, just very strange. And I finally said, what is the matter with you? What is happening? Do you feel bad? She said, no, but... The Colonial Dames will be here, and Hallie told me I'd be an old lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was a good one to get you to do anything. <laughs> and she'd tell you off and no bit and no shout all her. <laughs> and she was my good friend forever. <laughs> I did love her. <laughs> well, we might tell them a little bit about um, our colonial ancestors. You went in on an earlier one. Robert King Carter. Robert King Carter. And he was a great man in Virginia. And he did just about everything that anybody could have done. And he lived a long time. And had a big family. And what else to... I can't, I can't no, see, but that's, look... No, that's fine. And, and acquired a great deal of land, and that's why, that was one of the reasons he was called King, but he's all, often referred to as King Carter. And we did go once, remember, to Carter's Grove. We did. To see his home. I think that's one of the things that I've been made the most aware of in working with the Colonial Dames, is the opportunity to see so many of the um, museum houses that... Um, like our kind of Charlotte, but in other places. Mm. And not that Carter's Grove is one, but yeah. it was because he was the ancestor that we went to see it. So that, that has been a very interesting aspect. And I tell you, I saw a picture on the, t on the table at um, the Lee oh. Mansion, mm -hmm. right? And I said, look, Grace, that's the same picture that that's Miss Long had framed for everybody for a Christmas present. And she said it was somebody in the family and they had it in Robert E. Lee's house, so we don't know who he was from anybody. I was so glad to see the picture. And she didn't she didn't understand the mix up so I didn't bother with it. Nobody else knew the difference. We, we would have said, accepted him into the family. But she sent everybody his picture in a little frame for Christmas. And we thought that was so nice. And he was the first thing I spied in the Robin Lee mansion. Oh, really? How about that? Well, I, I have to tell you another story about the Colonial Dames and how I ultimately came to be <laughs> the center chair twice and the state president. Um, most recent state president. Some, some ladies my mother's age or a little older maybe called me repeatedly saying they would like to come by my house. This was in the very early 80s. It may have been 1980. And I would say, oh, I'm not going to be here. I have too many things going on. Would you come another time? And finally I said to my husband, if it weren't for the fact that I knew these ladies and knew that this would be impossible, I would have said they were selling Amway because they were so persistent and they wanted to come. And finally they came 
And what they said to me was, we need you to be the center chair in eight years. So they were planning eight years ahead for the center chair in Selma. Um, and I have, and I said, of course, eight years, but those eight years came in a hurry, and yeah. suddenly I was very much involved. Um, and those, that was Beverly Furness and Ruth Craig. And they helped me through it all, and I have, I have enjoyed all that I have done with the Colonial Dames. And Beverly was first in one, wasn't she? Yes, I think so. Beverly may, was. May have been the Selma Center, but I thought it was it, another office. It was, because we looked before we mm -hmm. came. She was state president. She was a state president. And another furnace was a state president, but I didn't know anybody. As Beverly Dunn was her cousin. That's right. Mm -hmm. she, but but I think it's it's interesting to see how, and you have to plan ahead for this kind of thing. And if you know you're going to have a responsibility later on, I think you become much more interested in learning about actually what the society stands for rather than simply going to meetings, which sometimes we're accused of just going to meetings. And <laughs> but I've, I have seen, um, particularly in going to Biennial in Washington, all of the wonderful things that the societies are doing in other states as well. That's been fun. I even went to a museum house in San Diego. I was just amazed. The, the dames, of course, it, it was not from the colonial period, but the dames had furnished an adobe, and that was their contribution, which was very nice. Could you go in? You could. You could go in, walk through it, and the furnishings were lovely. The furnishings were all period furnishings that they had um, contributed to the house. Well, that's amazing. And I had no idea that people in adobes lived that way. I don't know why I think of an adobe as being very, very simple, but this was very elaborate and, and period appropriate. Fine rugs and, and draperies and um, furniture. It's lovely. It doesn't look like you could even stand up in one. Well, they, they, they have low ceilings, but tall enough for you to stand up. So, Now, um, we're back to the how would you like to be remembered? And I would like to say that Caroline and my mother and I were all teachers and taught for a long time. How long did you teach? Well, I don't know. I taught, oh well, it was over 20 years. And I, I taught 30 years and um, my mother, I think, was one of the best elementary school teachers that I know of, and she still has children who come out. Children, they're old people now. <laughs> and she will say, oh my goodness, he looks old. <laughs> she taught uh, third grade uh -huh. and, um, and first grade. And, first grade. Uh -huh. and the last thing I want to say is, if you are 95 years old and you appear on Facebook with one of your former students, I think that's very impressive. And that came out this week. Mary Player put you on Facebook. <laughs> she went to visit. She went to visit mother and put her on her Facebook page. So that's keeping current. And was she with me? Yes. The two of you. Well, that was nice. It must have been a selfie. <laughs> No, I wasn't insulted. I think that was sweet of them. Well, and I, no, I didn't say you were insulted. Oh, I, I said I was impressed. Oh, you were I was impressed. impressed. Okay. And, and I, I do want to say one more thing. My ancestor was Benjamin Harrison. I was thinking about that when you were Benjamin Harrison the fifth, when you were talking about how you wanted to be remembered. Um, he actually was a descendant of Robert King Carter. But he, what he's really remembered for, this one is, that two of his sons, he was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, but two of his sons were United States presidents. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that is nice. Now, who, who? Tell this was again. Benjamin Harrison. Oh, yeah. The, the colon, my colonial ancestor. Uh -huh. But had two sons, or two, that well, is his son and his grandson.
When we share our past, we enable our present to continue the mission to accomplish our objectives, to preserve our mementos, relics, and buildings, to educate, to stimulate patriotism and love of country, and to impress upon the young the sacred obligation to preserve the memory of our ancestors. We, as Selma Daughters of the National Society of the Colonial Dames, are proud to join all the dames in Alabama and in other states in the efforts to conserve the virtues of our ancestors.